Routers in React have been in an interesting place for a while. From React Router, to Wouter, to Tanstack Router, to Next, to Remix, there's a lot going on. And as of today, it seems like the direction is cemented. React Router is on the way out. I'm not just saying this for the sake of speculation, I'm saying this because Ryan Florence, the creator of React Router and Remix, is saying it. Since Remix SPA mode, which by the way, if you're not familiar, is the introduction of single page app behaviors and expected workflows in Remix, so you don't need the Remix server, really interesting stuff. So since they introduced that SPA mode, the only real runtime difference between Remix and React Router is that the link prefetch arg will actually look for a manifest on content. So it's not just doing a quick prefetch for the JS, it's theoretically able to fetch way more stuff. It's about time to merge the projects. React Router version seven, it's probably Remix run React V3. Hard to figure out how to communicate this clearly. Understandable. If we just ignored a missing manifest in Remix Run's React link, then you could literally interchange the dependencies of React Router DOM and Remix Run React. Maybe we should go the other way and Remix becomes React Router v7. Either way, when we ship features in Remix, we first add supporting changes to React Router, and then Remix simply applies it to bundling in an optional server. Another way to say it, Remix was React Router with a required bundler and server, but now Remix SPA mode makes the server optional and React Router makes the bundling optional. Only difference would be to make the bundling optional and nothing changes about your app except where the imports come from. And now the path to the bundler optimizations, SSR and RSC are a clear path of tiny incremental updates instead of looking like a rewrite. This is an interesting framing here. For those who don't know the history of Remix, some of the interesting things that got us here were the, to put it frank, heavy reliance on ES build. Originally, Remix wasn't a framework at all. It was a paid template for running React Router with modern building and bundling best practices already implemented on the server and the client. And it was heavily built on top of ES build. To be fair, at the time when Remix first started, there were not other options really at all. We certainly didn't have Vite and things like it, really figuring out the bundling side. So going all in on manually building on top of ES build was reasonable. They took way too long to fix that. And thankfully, recently, with the introduction of Mark Dalgesh and a few other people to the team, once they joined Shopify, they actually managed to build things very well on top of Vite. And it's really nice to see that the Vite mode is now stable and often recommended by them because Vite has so many really handy bundling options and capabilities that just don't exist when you're manually building everything on top of ES Build. ES Build is a phenomenal tool, so much so that it's what Vite built on. When it comes to the size of the ecosystem, the plugins, the integrations, and all the other things you need to build a full stack framework that generates code for the server and the client with a complex relationship between the two, inventing all of that from scratch fucking sucks compared to rolling it from someone else. This PR is the one where this was all added. The unstable beat support made a ton of things possible that weren't before, including the ability to just take almost any Vite plugin and have it just work. This is a huge shift, massive lift for Mark and crew, and I'm genuinely really proud of them for making this happen. I did not think it was possible before, and they did it. They did it surprisingly quick. So Worth checking out if you're curious, surprisingly few lines when you consider all of the things it brings in and does, they pulled it off. Now it's stable. This is a great point too. It's arguable that Remix is just a Vite plugin now, which is a really cool point that the behaviors of Remix are encoded in a plugin that goes into the bundler, which enables so oh, much shit. Yet less than a year later is now the default. That last PR was October. This one was last week where they made the Vite builder path and bundler the new default for Remix. Huge. And once again, huge shout out to Mark and everybody else involved with making this happen. It is making Remix significantly more interesting and compelling to me. Back to this thread though, because the reason I brought that up is the weird history of Remix, where it started as a paid template, it moved to an open source framework, all built on top of ES builds, because honestly at the time, the main reason it had to exist was that combining React Router, server-side rendering, modern building best practices, and data loading was a really complex thing to architect. And if you compare that to something like Next, Remix did a much better job. The parts that they used to build on were just higher quality and much more modern at the time. Whereas Next.js still relies on Webpack to this day. And instead of moving off to something like Vite, they chose to go all in on building a new modern Webpack, TurboPack, on top of Rust. Vite's funny enough going in a similar direction where Vite depends on rollup for prod and ES build for dev. Nah, this needs a diagram because this is getting too in the weeds. Frameworks. <laughs> because the definition of a framework is hard. I'm not gonna try and justify it because we'll be here all day doing that. So instead, we're gonna do remix next.js v12. We'll add in the new next stuff after, I promise. So the first point is a client framework, which uh, obviously 
is going to be React for both. Duh. Bundler, which previously with Remix was raw ES build. Now it isn't, but this is, I'll say Remix V1. Remix V1 versus next less than or equal to 12. More accurate. Cool. Bundler is raw ES build. Webpack. There's a lot of detail here I don't think people appreciate, specifically how miserable Webpack was. Next was a massive level up for most people simply because you didn't have to manage your Webpack config. And I'll be honest, since I started using Next, I haven't had to touch a Webpack config basically at all. I had gotten so used to dealing with those things, managing my own bundles and bundle splitting, trying to make routes load with reasonable amounts of JavaScript. It was miserable. And Next handles almost all of that for us. It's one of the benefits of file-based routing. When you have all of your routes in different files, it's way easier to traverse that with a compiler and say, okay, this route imports these things, which import these things, which import these things. This route imports these different things. So for each route, you can make a different bundle depending on which things they do and don't need. So they were able to make a Webpack config that traverses that tree and generates pretty much the perfect thing pretty much all of the time. But it does so very slowly because it's Webpack and Webpack sucks. The Remix guys went the opposite direction, which is, yes, configuring these things sucks, we think the fundamental tool of Webpack is broken, so we're going to go with the best thing right now. And at the time, ES Build had not just dropped, but was still very, very new, and there was nothing else even close to that level of performance. The other options at the time were Rollup and Parcel. There were a few others, but these were the two people actually considered at the time. And ES Build was a Go-based alternative when everything else was craziness in JS land. Soon afterwards, an interesting thing happened where V was made. Vite's interesting because it isn't technically a bundler by itself. Vite is built on top of two other bundlers. In dev, they use ESBuild because ESBuild has the best performance, period. So when you're in dev and you save and you want to see the results immediately, ESBuild is a great way to get that. And when I am just working on my machine, saving changes, I expect to see them very quickly. And yeah, there's a reason they did it with ESBuild. It's great but they weren't confident in the ability for ESBuild to make optimal bundles for production. And the ecosystem for ESBuild just was not there compared to other things. So for production, they actually use a different bundler. They use Rollup. This is scary because you now have different bundlers which have different behaviors for different environments. And ideally those environments would be as similar as possible because it keeps you from running into those types of bugs and edge cases. But Vite was confident that they could work around enough of those to give you the best experience in both places. That said, they recognize the issue here of these behaviors being different and most of their work is trying to align the behaviors. So the future of Vite is gonna be a little different. The future of Vite is gonna use for dev and prod, roll down. Yes, not roll up, roll down. They're actually rewriting roll up in Rust in order to have the compatibility that they expect from roll up as well as that whole plugin ecosystem, but they're rewriting it in Rust so that it'll perform fast enough to compare with ES build. So you can run the exact same bundler in dev and prod without issues. Roll down actually just went open source if I recall. Probably should have made a whole video about this. And if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and I'll consider it. Because Rolldown is actually really interesting. It is a fast Rust bundler for JavaScript with Rollup compatible API. And it's originally by Evan Yu. I'm sure there's a lot of other contributors to it now. Yeah, he's not even like the top contributor anymore. Top three still. But Evan has been very excited about this project for a while. Oh, no shit. Always good to see Miles around. OG community member. And obviously, Patak always finds his way into everything even close to beat. Does not surprise me in the slightest. It's cool to see such a wide team already contributing to Rolldown though. And I'm very excited for the future of this stuff working. As I mentioned before, Next came with Webpack pre-configured, which was a huge, huge win. Really cool. They're realizing Webpack's too slow, but they're also realizing most of their customers are now deeply embedded, not just in Webpack, but every weird Webpack behavior. As such, just moving you to another bundler is non-viable. So instead of doing that, they're rewriting the bundler. So they're making TurboPack as a Rust-based compatible Webpack alternative, which is very exciting. It's also taken forever. I think they announced it two years ago, and I have a bunch of content where I talk about how painfully slow it has been waiting for TurboPack to the point where it hurt the Next.js rollout because they still relied on Webpack for App Router for so long. It has been miserable. A detail I'm not going into here is that the compilation of JavaScript and TypeScript is different from the bundling, which is its own chaotic rabbit hole we can go down. But Babel is not Webpack. Babel is used by Webpack. This video will become three hours long if I go down that rabbit hole. But know that there was an intermediary step. I'll just say Webpack plus Babel, where they moved to Webpack plus SWC. And since then, the focus has been entirely make TurboPack happen. It is technically still TurboPack plus SWC, 
I still rely on SWC for most of the compilation internally. But this has been the history of next bundle changes. Right now, we are here. This is still the default. And the future is actually pr looking pretty likely to be similar to how things were split before with Vite, where we have dev as Turbopack plus SWC, and then we have prod as Webpack plus SWC. And then hopefully, finally, we'll end up in Turbopack plus SWC land. The interesting piece here is that Webpack is being rewritten in order to make these intermediary steps viable. Now let's do the same for Vite. So the Vite chaos is originally dev, yes, build, in prod rollup. The future is literally just roll down. And I'm very excited for this. So that they're skipping so many steps, especially when you see the chaos that Next went through. Similarly, remixes, bundle chaos, is that they started with dev and prod being ES build, which was pretty chaotic because nobody was doing this. I promise you, nobody was doing this. And now they're moving to Vite. And what's interesting here is that Vite under the hood is going to handle this move. So technically, they're moving like this, and then they're going to move like that. If I copy paste this, this is a little more accurate to what's going on here. But since this is all going to be handled by Vite, theoretically, it's not their problem anymore, which is an interesting part of this chaos and an important one at that. But this is just the bundling side, and we're not talking about the bundling. We're talking about the routing. So let's keep going through here. We'll do data loading as the next point here, where in Remix, it's using their loader primitive. And in Next, it was get server side props. Obviously, in both cases, you could still define API stuff because the other big thing with Remix and Next versus single page app stuff is that these had a real server that was running, which meant you could do server side stuff, which you could not do before. And that includes loading data as well as rendering the components, which we're still using React for the client and server side rendering. So that part isn't too important. The router kind of is. So the router with Remix, y'all might think it's the Remix file based router, but it is under the hood actually React router. They just added a file based compilation step so that you can have a file routing tree and it can not only generate the correct routes based on that tree, but more importantly, it can generate the right bundles based on that tree. So you don't have to load all the content from your dashboard page when you're on your home page. Previously, these were steps you'd have to implement yourself. This was such a jarring change for me that when I moved from Webpack over to Vite for the first time, I tried to manually create my bundles for the different routes and it was a mess. I accidentally commented out my bundling steps and the output was way better. I was like, what the hell? And then I realized by just using react.lazy and letting the bundler do its thing, the output bundles that I got ended up being way better. So that was a fun learning of, wow, these tools can actually automate this, especially once you have file-based routing so that each file only imports the things it needs, things get much easier. And with next, it was the slash pages router, which is obviously also file-based. I'll be honest, when you look at this here and you realize that Remix happened after the original versions of Next, but quite a bit before the new Next model with server components and all of that, the obvious winner here is Remix. React is React, cool. Webpack compared to Raius build, like yes, plugins and ecosystem won't be there, but the overall experience is night and day. Get server side props versus loader. Get server side props is such a terrible pattern that it probably should have killed next. It was so bad. And I'm so thankful we moved off of it. Whereas the data loaders in Remix are probably still the best way to do route level data loading. So much so that most other frameworks are still copying it to this day. If you're thinking in traditional server side rendering and data loading terms, the Remix loader is still the best way to do stuff. And I am not gonna pretend otherwise. However, this is the best of a different generation of tools, which we'll get to eventually. You should also consider watching my longer server-side rendering video if you want to better understand. And then the router here, Pages router, rough but fine, not very composable. The Remix router, significantly better in that regard. The concept of slots, the ability to do a nested routing. I'll say file-based plus nested. Nested layouts are so good that Next basically had to steal it because it was comically night and day difference. If I'm on slash dashboard, I have a sidebar going to slash dashboard slash users should not make the sidebar go away. And I shouldn't have to manually add the sidebar to every single route in order for that to work. Once you and uh, Shane just put it perfectly in chat, he forgot about no nested layouts in Next. Yeah, same. Because it's been so long since I needed to deal with those myself. The amount of crazy hacks I had to do to apply layouts in Pages Router was painful. And I'm so thankful that we've moved past that. And a huge part of why isn't just Remix, but is React Router and the patterns that it encouraged, which is why it's interesting to see it die. Which is again, 
the thing we're here to talk about today. Next has since moved on to a new generation of tools. They're still based on React, but they're also heavy on server components and using the Canary, like the latest, latest of React. They're still technically on Webpack, but they moved the compilation to SWC already. And in the future, they're hoping to go even further with the Turbo Pack stuff I just showed. Server-side props is as dead as it should be. Finally, took way too long. And the pages router worked but wasn't great. And the new file routing stuff that they've done is uh, significantly less painful. And I've had a much better time with app router, even outside of the data loading stuff. That said, server components are so much better a pattern for data loading that it makes Remix feel as outdated as Remix made Next feel at the time. As such, there's a good bit of catching up to do. And that's why the changes that they just announced are so interesting. Since this all runs on the server, the server is able to know a lot more. It knows what data you need for a page. It knows what JavaScript you need for a page. It knows what pages are accessible to you at any given time. And by using that data, it can do a lot. Where if you're still using an old school Webpack project and you have just traditional React router, preloading will never be as smart as it is in something like this, where it can know so much more info about every route from every route. So yeah, if they want to go all out of their way to rethink and optimize as they now are built on top of Vite, which gives them a much better platform to fix these problems, I think it's a good decision. And I'm curious to see where they go with it. Our goal is to bring the community we've supported for the last 10 years a clear incremental path to the future of React, which includes a lot of server and build stuff. We're not trying to force you into the features, just putting it on the menu if you think it will benefit you. This is an important piece here. It's nice that as much as I and the Remix team disagree and like the next and the Remix teams disagree, that we do all agree for React to keep evolving, it needs to be on the server. It's so important that React and React developers understand how servers benefit their applications and the way that they work. And with Remix going towards the absorption of React Router, this becomes much more viable for a lot of people. I could actually see a path for a gigantic code base like Twitch to theoretically start moving this way now, where before that was not even a possible thought. And I am thankful for people like Ryan and for the Remix team for thinking about these issues and making sure people who have built heavily and deeply, like I would throw a lot of money on it, that of the 10 biggest React code bases in the world, all 10 of them are using React Router, like almost without question. So giving those people a path off, that's huge. Because a site like Twitch, a site like Netflix, those sites should be server rendered some amount. And with server rendering becoming the default, the thing that we once knew as React Router, I think it's fair to say, it's finally dead. Thank you guys as always, this has been a fun one. Until next time, peace nerds.